All right, YouTube friends and hopefully not neighbors. This is my third attempt at finding a lawnmower that's going to work from one of the big box stores. Uh, if you want to see my first two epic fails, you can look at the Toro that I just unboxed from Home Depot. It's a well-built machine. The electric start works great. You know what doesn't work great? The self propelled It doesn't work at all. And can you see that spring right there that's hooked to nothing? Yeah, that's supposed to go in that hole right there. Um, and then prior to that, uh, got the new DeWalt, uh, the battery one, the dual uh, 10 amp hour batteries, self propelled, the whole nine yards. Another epic fail on that one because there was no key in the box. This is the self propelled, this is the 20 volt version. So then start, press button, and hold to pull rail handle. It's supposed to come with a safety key that goes up into that slot there. Put the key in, and then you turn it on. So this is from Lowe's. Uh, got the old Craftsman M270 because the M260 just wasn't enough. This is, uh, I hope the cat's meow, self-propelled battery start with the Craftsman V20 batteries. And unlike the Toro that I bought that I did not realize didn't have it, this has a side discharge option on it uh, and the bagging, which the Toro did not have a side discharge option and that highly irritates me because this mower is not for urban and ah, no this is the suburbs for sure but the, the reason I'm buying this mower is not for me not for here uh, it is for my mom who lives in rural route America where bagging just really doesn't make much sense if you can side discharge it so let us unbox this and see what's going down third time's the charm right all right, there it is in all its ugly glory. Take her out, see what's going down. All right, so here it is in its less ugly glory. That's the thing, and this is the stuff. So we're gonna have to clip the bag onto the thing. Uh, I'm not sure what's in that box. And here we've got the optional side discharge with, I'm gonna assume that's a bag of oil in there. This looks like where the oil battery goes and uh, let's get it together the first thing the uh, destructions ask you to do is identify the handle style and mine has the pull-out handle as evidenced by uh, that set up there uh, just like so uh, let's take that thingy out of here which is that thingy right there on both sides all right so clearly those just unscrew and come out of the holes but then you you're gonna have to take these carriage bolts and wing nuts out at the same time or you're not going to be able to to fold this back so I'm going to choose the lower position uh, as my mom's a little bit shorter than I am that might make it a little bit easier for her make sure you get that carriage head into the old slot there and then tighten her down okay so we've got those in there and all tightened down and now uh, oh, and by the way, I was right, that it's a bag of oil. Now, I've not, never quite seen this before. It kind of reminds me of when I was in Israel, and for breakfast we would get chocolate milk in the morning that came in bags just like this, and I think it was called shock. And uh, sometimes it was spoiled, and other times it was just bad. All right, so the next order of business is these T-bolts need to go back in here. I'm going to fill up the oil. Take this off, throw a little gas in it to make sure that the spark plug is tight. And it is tight. I'm gonna put the battery in here. And let's see if it fires. We've got a key here, which was one of the first things. I didn't make it obvious, but one of the first things I checked for to make sure we got the key so we can start it. And it's gonna go right there. Unlike the $500 DeWalt that I bought that had no key, and then DeWalt said, F you, bro. Uh, take it back. Sad but true. Okay, it does say pour the entire contents of the supplied oil bottle um, slash bag into the oil fill. Check the oil level by inserting the dipstick, not threading it, blah, 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 blah. I'm only reading this just for your benefit. Do not use E85. I would pay attention to that. 
use E85 on this stuff, uh, you're asking for trouble. Just any amount of ethanol is asking for trouble in these things, but you can't avoid that. But you certainly don't want to use E85. And then there's the electric start. Uh, put the key in, push the key down, pull the handle back, boom, profit. Not only does the bag remind me of the old shock milk in Israel, the oil kind of looks like shock milk from Israel. Okay, got all the oil in. Put it in there, don't thread it. Let's just see what we got on the old stick here. Hopefully you can see it, we're right there in the cross hatch. Um, looks perfect right at the top of it actually. So let's call that good and I'll show you one thing already that I like about this, I appreciate this. Uh, we've got a drain plug here for the motor oil. And on many mowers nowadays, they're coming out of the box saying no oil change ever required, which is totally crazy. Um, if you know a smidgen about engines and the kind of abuse that a lawnmower takes, depending on, depending on, I guess, on the size of your yard and how often you mow it, the kind of grass and stuff like that. That Toro said that on the box too, and I, I didn't believe it then, don't believe it now. It was also a Briggs & Stratton engine. Um, I don't know if it's exactly the same, but this is this is got a Briggs too, uh, 159 cc. So, all right. Next up, the gas. Okay, so I put just enough gas in here to uh, get it started. And why? Well, because my luck in lawnmowers is bad right now, and the odds of me having to take this back are about 66%. Okay, so now, as it applies to putting the bag together, the frame is actually going to slide inside the bag. Once you get that part inside of it, then you're going to pull all these little rubber channels uh, out and over the, the wire frame. And I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what it looks like. And there you have it. Might take a little finagling to get some of the uh, the rubber pieces over the over the frame, but it's not that hard. So the last step here is the old battery. Let's see if it's got a juice gauge. It does, and it's probably one bar, but it is. But that might be enough to get us a start. So let's go ahead and slide this in. Okay, it looks like they've given us plenty of space here. If you wanted to install a, uh, a much larger battery, I'm sure you could put a, a 6 or a 9 amp in there. I don't know how big the V20s go, but you'd have plenty of room for a 9 amp if they offer it. That's that. Now the key. Well, let's give her a whirl. Alright, now I've got the old side discharge installed. It just goes up under that flap. I mean, why not? I paid extra for it. Give her a rip, tater chip. And we may not have enough juice to do this. Let's charge it. At the risk of looking like an internet bozo, here's why it won't start. Handlebars are way too down far in here, and the blade will sit in the handlebar. So I'm gonna have to take those uh, T-bolts out, slide the handlebar back. I don't know how I missed it. Uh, the directions didn't really show it that I could see. Uh, don't do that, that's not the way. Right. let's try that again because now we've got the handles up and out of the way of the blade got the t-bolts back in let a rip tater chip round two That's it. Okay, let's mow.
So, right out of the box, I can tell you that the front wheel assist is definitely the slowest and the le least grabby of any that I've used, including my older, much older Toro. Uh, and then you see the problem with these non-dedicated side chutes. They oftentimes fall right out. Uh, but let's lift this up a little and see. We're on three, let's go up to four. Okay, I think that the one does both sides on this mower. Some of you've got to do each wheel individually. It could just be that this was sitting way too close to the ground. Okay, we got our side discharge back on, and I almost don't care about that as much as I do wanting this to start faster. And it may be that I don't have enough gas in it. Okay, so some of you will laugh at me because you know this already, but there is a adjustment on the self-propelled portion on the cable. And so clearly the arrow says tighten that way. So as you do that, you can see this gray handle move. See how it's moving farther down? That means it allows you to squeeze it up more which engages the belt more on the front. So there's probably a little too much. Let's see if I can show it loosening. <clears throat> see as I'm loosening it, you can see the gray handle moving back towards the handlebars. Okay, which you can squeeze it, but it doesn't squeeze the belt on the front drive as hard. So if you're having trouble like I did with it not being able to really pull itself up a hill or the wheels won't engage but stop, when it hits some tough grass or an incline, um, tighten this down a little bit, you're probably all right. There we go. So not quite as smooth as my old Toro, self-propelled, but it's also not as heavy. So I would say it's a pretty solid little unit here. I'm pretty happy with it for less than 400 bucks. I think you're gonna be hard to beat it unless you you know, got a Toro that worked and you didn't care about the side discharge. But for me, this says everything. Um, 
it's not perfect but it's probably the best balance you're going to find on a gas powered lawnmower in 2021 especially with electric start that's, that's freaking sweet so friends and hopefully not neighbors if you're looking for a electric start gas engine self-propelled with a bagger and side discharge this is probably the one you're looking at or looking for the m270 by craftsman get it at lowe's they didn't have it in stock i ordered it online shipped it to the house for free you know the deal it does what it says it does i don't know for how long how long do any of these mowers last anymore these days but uh for less than 400 I, I think this is probably where you're at if you want to go electric go electric if you want to buy a toro if you want to get a honda engine this is not the one for you okay there are better ones out there i'm sure but they're not going to have everything that i've listed or if they do it won't be for that price uh, one last thing to consider here and i will say i normally don't care i got to admit the styling on this mower is really nice it's kind of like driving a little transformer around the yard I think they, you know, the Chinese, I mean, Craftsman did a great job designing it. I'll give them props on that. So if you buy this, enjoy it. I hope it works well for you. If you have any questions about it, let me know. And thank you, as always, sincerely for watching. I finally found one that worked. <laughs>